Good morning, folks, and thanks so much for joining us. We are recording this session, just so you are aware. Um, we recorded the session that we did last night, and we will post one of the sessions will go up online um, after we finish this, so you'll be able to view it again. In the, um, it'll be on our Bridgewater Rainham webpage. I want to welcome you all here. My name is Mary Dooley, and I'm the guidance department head for Bridgewater Rainham. I ask that you please mute yourselves um, and your microphones until the end of the presentation, and we'll be happy to take any questions and answers at that point. We do have ones that you have submitted. Um, we will monitor the chat and try to answer as many questions as we possibly can. One thing we're really good about doing is uh, if we don't have an answer for you, we'll find an answer and we'll get back to you. So if there's a question you have this, e this afternoon, uh, this morning, that we don't have an answer to, one way or the other, you're going to hear back from us regarding that. I have with the, me my colleagues, and I'm going to hand the presentation over to them in a minute, but I'd like to introduce them. Today we have with us Mrs. Hallgren. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Mrs. Redfern. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming. Mrs. Smith. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Mrs. Caro. Hi, everyone. Welcome to BR. And we say the, be the best for last, it's Mr. Barber. Also the oldest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome. Uh, hopefully we can answer uh, any questions that you have and make you feel a lot more comfortable with uh, sending your son and daughter up here next year. Thank you, everybody. Um, one thing I want you to be aware of is when your student comes to the high school, they're assigned a guidance counselor. Once we have the final numbers of all the students coming to Bridgewater Rainham, we separate the students by alphabet. So your student will be assigned a counselor when they come in as a freshman and they'll continue to have that same counselor all four years. It's great for a relationship building between you, between your student, and it also, by the time they're seniors, they may be looking for recommendations for um, employment, for colleges and whatnot. It gives us an opportunity after four years of knowing the student pretty well that we can do our due diligence on um, any of those recommendations. Um, so once they are here, they'll be assigned the counselor for now. Any one of us can be um, accessible to answer questions for you. We work as a team and we uh, pretty much have, if we don't have the answer, we'll go to one of our colleagues. So um, I want you to feel comfortable with that. I am going to hand the presentation over now to Mr. Barber and Mrs. Redfern. So I will mute myself and jump in if we need to be and the counselors as well, and we'll monitor the chat. So enjoy the presentation and we'll see you at the end. Good morning, everyone. So we'll take you through the presentation. And again, if you have questions and you wanna put them into the chat room, feel comfortable and uh, one of the councils, if, if possible, will answer it back. Otherwise, we can save them and try and answer them at the end or with some of the questions that you've already presented, uh, you may find the answer right there. So here we go, transitioning up here. Uh, we're really excited to have your sons and daughters come up here next year. Uh, Mrs. Dooley had mentioned the high school councils and how we break down by alphabet. This sort of gives you an idea of how we would break down next year. Sometimes it tweaks a little, but in general, this is the way th that will hold the line next year. So if you s happen to be sitting there with a you know, pen and paper and you wanna write down who the potential counselor is, and that's the person you wanna email or contact, if you have questions, you know, feel free to do that. We also have two, you see at the bottom, we have two adjustment counselors. And the role of the adjustment counselor is there to help your son or daughter transition if there's things going on uh, within the household, if there's some social emotional things going on, or they just want to talk to someone. The guidance staff is there also for that. You know, we pride ourselves in working with students and being open, and we all pride ourselves in being a safe and supportive uh, spot for kids to come to. But we all know that there are things that go on in, in all of our children's lives where sometimes they just need to talk to someone um, and have someone listen to them at a, at a different level. And so your guidance counselor is there and also the adjustment counselor is there and we'll be glad to work with them and feel free to reach out to them at any time. Keeping in touch with what's going on. So we have a, a Twitter account at BR Guidance we would suggest if you do have a Twitter account to put us in there because there's a lot of important information that goes out. 
up-to-date information. We don't inundate you with just random things. So if you're getting something from uh, BR guidance, it is rele relevant for the time. Yes, you may see something that's there for a sophomore and your son or daughter is a, a freshman. But if nothing else, you see some of the things that are going out, which will you know, give you an idea of uh, down the road. Uh, we also have a Google Classroom, um, which you, next year that you should definitely uh, sign up for. Graduation requirements. So to graduate, you need 115 credits. Now, right now you're sitting and going, well, how does that work? The normal caseload for courses for each student is 30 credits, six courses, and they have an open period. So if they were to take six courses each year, that's 30 credits, that's 120 credits. So just carrying a normal load gives you the, the over the 115. You have to pass all the state required exams, the MCAS. You have to pass all the required courses and you need 60 hours of community service. And we'll, uh, we'll address that a little bit later on. Full courses. So you have your English class, your math class, your science class. Those are considered full year courses. Those are five credits each. We have half year courses and most of those are electives. And with that half year course, it's 2.5 credits. <clears throat> and again, we try each year you have to total 30 credits at, at the end of the each year. So the required courses, four years of English, four years of math, three years of social studies, three years of science, two years foreign language, two years of phys ed wellness, and then over the course of four years, you must take one semester of business, music, or art. As freshmen, you have two levels. You have accelerated, which is equal to the honors level class. Students are recommended by their teachers based on grades and work habits. So you'll see recommendations from their teachers that will say accelerated, or they'll be recommended for academic, which is a college prep level class. Um, all, college, all courses are designed to prepare students for college academics. Advanced placement courses. This, except for AP Computer uh, Science Principles, which is open to 10th graders, your advanced placement courses come up during your junior, junior and senior year. And those are recommended uh, through your sophomore year uh, instructors. You can see the list of classes here. One of the things that you should know is that students are required to complete work in the summer and also take the national AP exam at the end of the school year. So what's your typical freshman schedule? English nine, modern world history, biology, math, be placed either in an algebra, geometry, hybrid, and that's determined by a placement test. There's accelerated, algebra one, academic algebra one. You have foreign language, either Spanish or French. You have your physical education wellness. And then as a uh, art music business elective, and again, this is something that you could take during your freshman year or you could put it off. OK, so your elective courses come down, holding off until afterwards and taking it later, because that gives you an opportunity to have a study for the whole year. So freshman math, again, accelerated algebra, geometry, it's determined by that placement test. Then you have accelerated algebra one, algebra one, academic and accelerated. Students will take a ch the academic classes, algebra is a challenging course, reviews many of the topics from eighth grade, but does so in greater depth. Okay, they're gonna learn additional algebra one content. So a lot of you might say, well, my son or daughter took algebra when they were in eighth grade, so why don't they automatically go on to geometry? They don't because realistically, it's a more generalist class. So unless you have attained skills over that time, which is determined by the placement test, you are, you're much better off starting off with the, the Algebra One Academic or the Algebra One Accelerated. Now, some of you might say, yeah, but I want my son or daughter to get to calculus. 
their senior year. And if they take the route you're talking about, they won't get there. No, during the sophomore year, if a student wants to get to that calculus, their senior year, they can double up. So sophomore year, they can take geometry and algebra two at the same time. Seventh class. So we talked about they have to carry the six classes, 30 credits. So at that point, you have one open class. So if you decided you didn't want to study, your son or daughter didn't want to study, so they could decide, okay, I'm going to take that elective and get it over with. So I'm going to take a half a year uh, of that elective. So that would mean you would have seven classes for half the year. You would have six classes for the other half, and you would have a study during that half year. There's also other electives that you'll see on the sheet that are full year classes. So if you decided to try and get one of those electives, then that would mean that you would have no study whatsoever for that year. You would have seven classes. Also, there are some other half year classes, same thing. You could take one of the arts classes in one of the other half year, and that would mean that you would have no studies for that whole year. One thing you should know is that the students aren't guaranteed a seventh class. You can select it, we will, tr we will put it in and we will let the computer do its due diligence in fitting everything in. But if it turns out it doesn't fit into the schedule or if it turns out that the class that they signed up for is full, we do break it down, meaning that if seniors have applied for that and ninth graders have applied for it or 10th graders, the seniors would get first choice on that class. Here's the, some of the semester courses. So those are the half year classes. You can see drawing and painting, current events, music exploration, computer applications. The full year courses, band, chorus. So if your students have been involved with that and that's something you want to continue, then that would go in as a full year class. And you might be saying to yourself, but then how can they get their half year class in, which is a requirement. You, in your junior and senior year, you have more openings because the required courses have been completed. So you can put off that half year requirement until later on. It would be the same if you signed up for band and chorus. If that fit into your schedule, you could put off the health, uh, the phys ed and wellness class until later on, but you would still have to fulfill that requirement. Timeline. So you can see what's going on right now is that on March 22nd, the cohort A will do a math placement exam. Okay, and those are the accelerated students. And then on March 25th, the cohort B will do that. And then the course election sheets with teacher recommendations will be sent home to you. Again, cohort B and C, April 1st, and cohort A, April 5th. You will review those, sign them, get them back. If you do have questions, that's the time. Hopefully you've already had the opportunity through parent-teacher conferences to talk to the teachers about potential placements. But if you do have questions, uh, once you get the recommendations, that's the time to reach out to your teachers. Um, and don't, you know, don't wait until after you send it back to us. Uh, course selection sheets will be, uh, again, they have to be returned April 8th and April 12th. Here's your selection sheet. So this is what it's going to look like when it gets sent to you. You can see at the top, those are the, the required courses that the students will be taking. And then the next list are the um, required half-year class that they get to select uh, if they want to take one of those. And then the bottom one, those are the electives. So those are the electives that they can take over and above um, if they, they want to do that instead of taking uh, the half-year class. So you just go through that. One of the things that we recommend is if you do pick an elective um, that you put in uh, an alternative. So if one doesn't fit in or if one is full, you know, put the alternative in. So if we can, you know, look at that and try and get it in, we can. Community service. This is something that right now is, is has been on hold for two years, but the requirement is 15 hours each year. Now, you might say, all right, next year is coming. Can my son or daughter do some community service during the summer and hand it in for next year? Absolutely. 
It, in fact, it makes sense. Get it over with, you know, work with it. You might find something that you really like and continue it. You're required to do 15 hours. It's 60 hours for the year. So let's say you do 70 hours during the summer. You can submit the 70 hours, but only 15 of them will count. In other words, you can't fulfill your 60 hours of community service in one year. It's 15 hours. So it would be each year. But a lot of our students do it during the summer. So because they have a lot of activities during the school year, and it just makes it easier for them to do that. Athletics, you can see here during the fall, we have uh, football, cross country, field hockey, chilling, golf, soccer, volleyball. Right now we're, we're, we're back on with our schedule. We're trying to get the fall schedule completed. Um, and then we're gonna be going into our spring schedule. We have our fingers crossed as, as you do that, you know, everything uh, come September will be back to normal and we'll be following our regular schedule of athletics. Clubs and organizations. This is something that I think every one of us would say, let your student, give them support, suggest to them that they get involved with a club or organization. In many cases, this might be the first opportunity to try something really different uh, that's also tied into school. Uh, so if they want to get involved with the art club, the drama club, the, the musical um, robotics. I mean, these are all things that are going to be new and different to them, math team. So reach out. Now you might say, well, my son and daughter are way too shy. They're not going to get involved in that. Then reach out to the guidance counselor. Let us call them down and say, okay, you're interested in this? Yes, I am. So we'll break the ice for them. We'll either introduce them to one of the students that's in that group, or we'll contact the advisor and set up an opportunity for that student to talk with them. Don't let them say, I'm too shy to do this, because what happens is we talk to them in their junior year, they join that club, and they go, oh my God, I love this. I wish I had started this when I was a freshman. So be supportive of them trying it, and if you find they're real nervous, send us an email. We'll work with them to get them involved. Last one is challenge yourself. You know, make sure the students, you know, if you have a son or daughter that feels as though they, they want to try a different course, um, then, you know, let them do that. You know, let them go outside the box. You can see some of you might have looked at that initial sheet that we gave you with all the courses. You might say, well, geez, there's not much choice there for our freshmen. Well, the requirements are such your freshman and sophomore year that you don't have a lot of room for electives, but you can see here that here's a list of all the different courses that the students are ultimately going to have opportunities to take. Um, and so as, as you look at these courses over the years, it, you know, you're going to see, boy, I, my daughter or my son's going to have a lot of challenges, and a lot of opportunities. Also, if you have questions about trying to see what the course entails, the, um, on our website, you know, the, you'll have the course selection booklet to read over if you have questions about what it, what involves in that particular class. Dual enrollment. This is a great opportunity for students who want to either challenge themselves or want to do something for enrichment. And that is the student can take college classes while they're in high school. You're eligible to start this program in the the spring or second semester of your freshman year. Freshmen and sophomores can take courses at the community colleges. We have a relationship with Bristol Community College and with Massasoit. Most of our students will do it with Massasoit because there's a Middleborough campus um, and the, uh, the campus in Brockton. But again, we have BCC also. This is where they sign up for a class on that campus or in this year, this particular year, and I would think in some cases next year, they can take the, the class remotely. This is a college class. It's not a high school class. You're not signing up as a high school student with all high school students, other high school students. So when you join that class, you, any of us that are on this screen right now could be taking that class with your son or daughter. No one knows that they're a high school student. They're enrolling as a student taking that college class. What's the great thing about it? You get to take those credits with you when you go to college. So in some cases, students over their 
three and a half years, might take four or five classes, and you can transfer that. So if you think about that, that's a half year of college done. So it, again, it's a great opportunity. In the junior senior year, you can not only take classes at the community colleges, you can also take them at, let's Bridgewater State, UMass Dartmouth. So, you know, if you have questions, reach out to your guidance counselor. It's a program that I oversee, so feel free to, to contact me. Um, we usually, we do enrollment for the spring classes in November. So if it's something you're interested in next year in November, we register for the spring classes. And in March, we register for the fall classes. So, you know, don't wait until December trying to get into the spring. This is going to be a challenge for me, Mrs. Redfern. I'm going to have to put my glasses on, I think. Mrs. Dooley specifically Would made this. Would you like me to read them to you, Mr. Barber? What's that? I'm going to read them to you and you can answer them? No, believe it or not, I can see them. Okay. <laughs> I just had to put, put the cheaters on. Uh, why are students taking algebra? I think I already answered this and not allowed geometry. Um, it really is that the eighth grade algebra course is not a full true algebra course. So the students that are recommended for algebra one um, in their freshman year, that's the best place for them. It helps them prepare for MCAS, the PSATs. Um, so the, we, we trust the teachers that are working with the students uh, in eighth grade in their recommendations. And also we said there is a placement test that will be available to those students that were doing the accelerated level. Do we have any idea when in-person learning is going to be full-time? I, I would answer that the same way that the question is. We have our fingers crossed, you know, and we're just going with the department head and our superintendent. And, you know, we're all optimistic that our students will be back here five days normal come September. Will children get lockers? Depending on the guidelines in from, from DESE, um, this year, they didn't have lockers, um, but students are assigned. You know, in the past, what we've done to students that wanted lockers, we've taken care of it. So yes, they will have, they will have lockers. If you truly have a student that's struggling with lugging books and such, then contact the guidance council. We can see we can work something out with getting extra books. Um, also, the number of our classes now that are online has really... Uh, lessen the students walking around with backpacks that weigh 80 pounds. If my child's on a 504, does this change in any way? There is a yearly review. So in eighth grade, I'm thinking that in some cases you've already had that review. If they have the review at the end of the year, uh, your guidance counselor up here at the high school will be involved and will be contacting you and you should feel free to, to reach out to us. Uh, because in some cases, if you do have a 504, there may be some things on that 504 that are not transferable at the high school level. So it's something that we definitely look at. Uh, also, we've had over the years, we've had a number of, of parents who have said, you know, the 504 has worked out great, but I think that my son or daughter has transitioned and I don't need to continue that. So it is something that we will all work with each other. If you have questions, please reach out to your counselor in the springtime to make sure that, um, you know, that we're following through with you. Uh, the bus is different. We have put a contact person there. Uh, the bus is the two miles away. Whether you fit into that, it, it depends on where you live. I mean, where you live right now, you might get a bus. It may change to, again, depending on the, the distance. So I would say check with, uh, you know, Mrs. George, you know, you've got the email address for her right there. How do we decide on accelerated classes for next year? The current grade eight teachers make the recommendations. If you don't agree, as I had mentioned earlier, speak to the teacher. And if you still have a conflict at that point, it's talking to the principal. It's really hard for you to call us and for us to help you with that. That's really something that has to be taken care of um, at the eighth grade level. Are parents able to give their input on classes the child will be in? Yes, through conversation with the teacher. Um, again, hopefully you've had parent-teacher conferences. If not, you can get into conversations with them. And once you see the 
recommendations, um, then you, you can certainly follow up with that also. Will there be any classes such as math pre-assigned by skill level? We have accelerated in academic classes. So again, based on the student's recommendation placed on their ability and how they challenge themselves, you know, they're, they're placed in, in the correct position. One of the things that we talk about too is that sometimes we have parents who have said, yeah, I want my son or daughter to be in an accelerated class what you don't know, what the teacher's making the recommendations, you might have every teacher say they'd be accelerated. And for that particular class, it's a correct assignment. But then you might sit down with your child and go, boy, um, can we, you know, all accelerated classes, is that going to be too much? You can mix and match. So you don't have to have all accelerated classes or all academic classes, if they were recommended for accelerated, you can mix and match. So feel comfortable. You need to sit down and talk with your child and say, okay, what's the best mix for next year? I, I'm gonna jump in right on that one too. And uh, we mentioned this last night, give you a break for a minute, Mr. Barber. Um, just to know, um, just know when you, if you do um, move your student to a level that they, um, we're not recommended for if you're the teacher says okay go ahead and try it um, the students do have to stay there till the end of that first marking period that can be overwhelming a lot of time for students they get into an accelerated level they worry that um, they can't handle it they want to get out of it they're really struggling and then when they go to move that it could mean that they have to move the rest of their schedule or it could mean that they're going to take a very poor grade for that first quarter. And to so some students, that's that's really devastating. Um, I'll, I think I'll jump in before Mrs. Hogan can echo what she knows about this too, is that grade does follow them to the next class. So we want to caution you with um, making some changes and saying, you know, it's okay to challenge yourself, but we also too want to caution you that there are some rules and parameters in there that um, have the student have to stay there. It also too may mean if they, um, wanted to get out of that English class because they took an accelerated level, it's going to affect the rest of their classes. So in order to get them down to another level, they may lose an elective, they may have to change their math class or their history class because of the way the schedules are created. It may not, there may not be room in just an easy swap. So it's not always easy. So we want to caution you with that. Um, a lot of times students won't understand that and we have to be very upfront with you that it, it, they'll have to stay for that first marking period. And then it's only if there's room available and if we can make it work. So we ask you to really think long and hard about the recommendations. And sometimes students want to start out their freshman year, get their feet ready, get their feet wet, get into it, learn what it's all about. It's going to be a new thing. There's five different teachers as opposed to a team. And they might need that freshman year to get acclimated and then blossom and go and try to challenge themselves as they get a little bit more familiar with their surroundings. So I just want to point, put that out to you. Thanks, Mr. Barber. I'll let you go ahead. No problem. I know we have a number of students that are in the Ingenuity, the full remote program. So uh, there are parents that have questions about that. Um, these, the forms will be sent home to you with recommendations. The recommendations are coming from, uh, the teachers will make them based on really what they were uh, recommended, what would they would have been recommended for, uh, for eighth grade. Um, as far as extra help, I mean, all of the teachers are trying to make sure that we're up to speed and ready to have all of our students, no matter whether they're ingenuity or whether they're in their cohorts, um, you know, be up to speed with their classes and, and be ready to, you know, partake next year. And what we're all saying is going to be a normal school year, five days in school. Let's just hope that's where we're going. Is there a chance that could be remote learning going forward for next year? I would say this is a situation that has not been addressed by the district. Um, I think our goal absolutely is that 100% of our students will be back in school next year in their classes. What's the plan for summer homework this year? That's on hold. We uh, A decision has not been made on that. Once it is, you certainly will be uh, contacted and the students will be made aware of it in where you can find that work. BR, does BR offer music education opportunities? Uh, we have a, you know, we have a nice program here, concert band, 
It's required for grade nine band students. So you can join grade nine, 10, 11, 12. We have car chorus that's offered both academic and accelerated. We have music exploration that's available for all grades. Music theory for grades 10, 12, AP theory for grades 11, 12. So there's, there's a lot of things that are happening there for the, for the music. Also, a lot of our students that are involved in that also get involved with our rainwater players because they put a musical on every year. So there's an opportunity to take those skills that they're learning and uh, then extend it further and, and be on stage. The question was on the math placement test, and I think we've addressed that. If they don't score high enough in the, the math placement to go into the hybrid algebra geometry, then they'll be placed uh, in the accelerated algebra one cl class. Will it be a step up day? We, we're hoping, depending on what DESI is, leads us into for the rest of this year, if there's something that we can do to provide that, we will. Otherwise, there will be a virtual step up day that Mrs. Beach has put together and uh, she's done a great job with, with that. And you've, have, you've got the link here that you can go into and, and view it. Will ninth graders have electives next year? Again, that's what we, we've discussed that two or three times. Yes, the opportunity is there to select an elective um, it all comes down to uh, whether it fits into the schedule um, and whether you want to have a study, you know, for the full year or whether you want to have a study for the half year. Do you have a printed layout of the school? Again, here's a, a link for you to, to take a look at that. And then the art program, what types of courses are offered freshmen? We have drawing and painting, ceramics and crafts uh, are allowed, you know, available for the freshmen to get involved in. And then how does band fit into the schedule? Basically, you put band down as one of your choices. Same with chorus. If, if one of those is your choices, you put that down. And then when we put all your other classes and we ask the computer to go mix and match, they will try and fit that schedule together. Uh, again, we don't usually have much of a problem with our freshmen uh, and even sophomores getting either one of those. Um, if you want both, again, remember that you would be putting off your uh, phys ed and wellness class for a later time. If you want one, that just means that you'll end up with no studies for the year. What language is off? We have French and Spanish up to level four, year four. Career workshops, offer the guidance. A lot of a lot of parents ask to say, well, you know, my son or daughter's coming up there and all of a sudden come junior year, they have no idea which way to go, what they want. And, uh, you know, we're not a vocational school. You know, we don't have the courses that BP has. But at the same time, we do have students that are that would like to look at other careers. So there's a few things that we try and offer and the students do take advantage of it. One is the ASVAB. The ASFAB is the largest career interest inventory that's used in the world. It's also the only one the military uses. So what this is, it's a three hour, for lack of better words, exam test, but it's an exam test with really no right or wrong answers. It's your answers based on your knowledge, based on your skills. You go through, you answer everything. It's then taken and put into a computer, it's scored. We have a follow-up meeting. And during that follow-up meeting, they look at your scores and then they provide you links based on your strengths and weaknesses, careers that you wanna look at. It's really a very uh, extensive, very accurate uh, assessment of your strengths. So it's, that's a great thing for students to take in their sophomore, junior year. It's not available to freshmen. And I'm, uh, I'm presenting this because I want you to know what's there down the road. And it's not because your son or daughter is a freshman. The, their experience over the years is that freshmen uh, who take it, it's just not a test that's, that's really helping them at that point. So they don't allow it for freshmen. So it's something that you can look at. We do put it on our links. We put it into the Google Classrooms for each class. So whenever that we offer this, 
you know, it's well known that it's, it's, it's coming. Um, and we try and do it twice a year. We try and do it in the fall and then we try and do it in the spring. One that goes along with that is the mass CIS and you can see the link there. That's on a smaller scale of a career assessment. So if you wanted to go in and just sort of get an idea and have your son or daughter go through and do that career assessment and see what it comes up, just to get them interested in looking at it and say, oh, I never knew that based on what, you know, what I'm answering, these are types of careers I might wanna look at. That same website is something that we use quite a bit later on because it's a college search where you can plug in your major, the area. Uh, it's got probably 15 different questions that you answer. And then based on that, it's gonna give you a list of colleges that you might wanna do some research on. The last area is the, um, that I wanna talk about is the mass hire. This is something that we've been involved in uh, for the past two and a half years. It's a great program that has been coordinated um, through the state of Massachusetts. And it gives our students opportunities for internships. It gives our students opportunities to listen to CEOs of manufacturing companies. So there's presentations. And so during that presentation, and right now we're tying it into our business department. And so they'll provide that um, opportunity for students to view, in some cases, their live Google Meets, where they have CEOs of different companies talking about manufacturing, you know, talking about, you know, law and law enforcement. Yes, uh, two days ago, there was a law law enforcement panel where there was a presentation. So these are things, if we can make them available, we put them out there. Otherwise, we make them available from the, through the teachers. One of the things that we're trying to get more involved in is internships and or we're doing. Uh, so this year we started a program on real estate. It's an after school program where students will learn about the careers in real estate. And in this particular year, they're doing uh, basically comparative market analysis. So they're being taught how to take houses in the, you know, out there in the housing field and doing an analysis. And we said, all right, let's see what the interest is. We had 36, we, had, we filled up immediately. We had 36 slots and we had 36 students sign up for that. And it's an internship program that will, that takes place after school. So we hope to expand on that in the future and opportunities that we get, we will sort of hand that out to our students. And again, that's on the outside of the academic, educational, and really giving them a chance to look at careers and seeing if there's something out there. What are extracurricular activities available? So we had the slide that talks about the clubs and organizations and the sports and really, again, I, we. I can only highlight, you, you really have to have your son or daughter take advantage of these opportunities. Um, what are our times? 726, dismissals at 210. This is cer certainly subject to change uh, depending on the guidelines that we have next year. Our sports sign up before the year begins. Check the website. Family ID is usually open on June 1st. Beware of the deadlines. Once these deadlines are closed, they don't reopen. So if it's a sport that your son or daughter is interested in, then contact in the athletic department. If you have any questions because you haven't seen the signups, you should definitely do that sooner than later. The information will be coming out to the middle school, you know, within the next, next month or so. Do you have unified sports programs? We did previously have a unified track team, but it was something that we were not able to sustain. Um, right now, we're not, we don't have a plan to reinstate that program. Extracurricular activities inclusive with special education students. We're, we're an inclusive community. In other words, our special, we, our special education students have the same opportunities as any other student uh, in the school. If individual accommodations need to be made, then we'll make them. But otherwise, you know, the, the clubs and organizations are available to everyone. Same with the sports. 
you know, if we're full occlusive, if, if something needs to be worked out, that's the athletic director will, will meet with the parents and work with you on that with the coaches. Okay, that concludes. I have not seen the chat room going on. I've been paying attention to the screen. So I am sure that the other, you know, counselors have been answering all of your questions. But if there are questions now, this is the time to put something in the chat room or wave your hand, which I can't see a lot of you. Um, so I would say just take yourself off mute and, uh, you know, ask us a question and fire away. Let me, uh, let me jump in one quick second. To, there was one question. It was going to be kind of a lengthy answer. Um, one parent asked a question, um, what I said about students being able to double up for the next year and courses being guaranteed. Unfortunately, no course is actually guaranteed except their main courses. So a student taking English, math, science, history, definitely those courses are going to be available. That's why we need to know the numbers of students that are coming to Bridgewater Rainham so that we can make sure we have the sections for them. We make every effort. If your student is recommended, which won't be until the middle of the year, usually at the um, midterm is when they make their recommendations. This year, everything shifted. So if you have high school students, you know they just got recommended over their third term progress report. That is because of the pandemic. Hopefully next year we'll be back to normal. At the mid-year point is when the teachers make the recommendations. Once we see that, that the student is recommended to double up in their math the following year, or if you're requesting that they double up and you feel strongly that they can handle it, every effort will be made. That will be put into their request. This um, computer will then, as Mr. Barber said, will spin everything out and put it together. Now, if we look at, when we go back over to check it after it's all been done, if we find that Susie was recommended for that but didn't get it, we're gonna take a look at what is in the schedule that's blocking it, and then we'll meet with Susie and we'll figure out what do we have to drop or what do we have to shift? So it may mean, I think one of the counselors answered, the student may not have a study hall, depending on the other courses that are in there. So nothing is guaranteed, but every effort will be made to accommodate that request because we do understand that that's the way that you're gonna move forward. Um, so we, we do look at that as soon as the schedule is run with Ms. Watson and all of us, um, we're diligently looking at those courses to make sure that we can get the schedule where it should be. Um, I hope I've answered that question, and if not, please reach back out to me. And you can always reach out to me via my email. It's mdooley, D-O-O-L-E-Y, at bridge dash rain. Pick up the phone, extension 11141 here, and I can have a better conversation with you if you have more um, pertinent information. Um, the other thing, too, is somebody asked a question, and we do try to do this often. If you already have somebody at the high school and they have a specific guidance counselor, sometimes when we go to split, the alphabet does change. The counselors look through and say, if they already have a sibling, usually they'll grab that other sibling. So it kind of alters the name. That's why we're not succinct in saying, Michelle Smith has A through C. She may have a couple of Ds or Es depending on where her alphabet felt one of the other years. So we try to keep everybody together. If we miss somebody, reach out to us and just say, would it be? You just want to have one person to call. We totally understand that. So just reach out to us and ask us, is it all right, please, if we make um, the switch? And nobody's, nobody's feelings are hurt here. We all work together. Uh, so I think I've answered those two questions. Now we will open it up and let um, people either, if there's something still more in the chat that we have to deal with, or if anybody has any other questions, as Mr. Barber said, you can just uh, unmute yourself and ask us the question. There is one thing that I'll add why people are trying to think of possible questions. When you do your, when you're filling out your, um, signing your recommendation forms for courses for next year, everyone should be filling that out. Okay. So even if you're thinking that your son or daughter is going to be going to another school um, and you're saying, well, they're not coming to BR next year. Um, I don't have to do this. Please make sure you fill it out. Ask for any electives that you want, sign it, send it back. We are, we schedule everyone. You know, if something happens over the summer and you decide that you're not going to that other school and you are going to BR, you will have a schedule. So it's much better than trying to come here in September and saying, oh, we decided not to go there or you decided you didn't tell us and all of a sudden you walk in and say, look, oh, we didn't go there. So and we don't have a schedule for you. So please, 
everyone who gets a form, sign it, send it back. There's a spot at the bottom that you can say, going to Bishop Fian, you know, going to, you know, Rivers Day School, whatever. Just put that down there uh, or going to BP. It's just it's important that we all have a schedule um, in front of us so that we can put it in there and that you know that there's something there. And I saw a question pop up into the chat, and I think Mrs. Smith just answered it. But yes, we do meet regularly with your students. Um, we have regular set meetings that we have. We have time frames that we have to meet with the seniors to go over their college apps and whatnot, and then the juniors and then sophomores, freshmen. But we mix it up a lot. Um, we meet with the students often. Um, we might see something in the progress reports that we're a little concerned about. We might see something in report cards. We might just have seen something that's going on and we want to touch base with the students. We want the students to feel comfortable about guidance. It's not a negative place to come to. When you come down here, we have uh, six computers. We've had students come in first thing in the morning. Oh my gosh, I forgot I was supposed to print out my book report or whatever it is that they had to print. They forgot to do it at home. That day is going to be ruined if we don't help that student out. So what we do is have them come in here, grab the computer, Print your information out, get into your Google, whatever you have to do, print your stuff off and send them off to class. We want them to feel comfortable coming in here and working with us. We also do presentations down here. So it's a welcoming place for the students to be. If you, as the parent, knew that your son or daughter, and I think Mr. Barber covered that in the beginning, um, struggled in the morning, just, I need somebody to touch base. I'm not sure what's going on, but left here on fire today. Uh, just give us a call, shoot us an email. We'll reach out to them. We'll find them during the day. Oftentimes, too, the freshmen come in and they're so concerned about getting to all their classes, which they should be, but they're very concerned and they don't find the time to get down to guidance and they have questions to ask. We encourage all of our students, and they're very good about doing it, um, email us. Say, Mrs. Dooley, I need to see you today. Can you find me? I will find you in whatever class you're in. If you're in a study hall, we'll grab you out of that. We might grab you before the end of a class. We'll give them a pass to go to the class late, get out early, whatever we have to do to reach out to them. So your student can do it. You can do it. Shoot us the email and say, hey, would you mind touching base with Johnny today? I sent him in with some paperwork that he needs to have signed. Uh, might be for that insurance for your car, the you show your report card. Just shoot us the email and we'll make sure that we find your child because sometimes it is overwhelming. We do have it that the students do have to have a pass to come down to guidance. It, they, the teachers can call us, but we want them to feel as though they we're open door. They can come in here at any time. Often to, students will come in during a study hall on their way to or from lunch. They'll come in after school. So please make sure that they feel comfortable. They know that they can come to guidance and we're going to make them feel comfortable when they're here. Um, so I think I answered that question, but we do have regular meetings. We have regular presentations. We'll have regular presentations for you folks as well. Um, we have done them in years past. We've done them in the lecture hall, the auditorium. Uh, this year was, it, we're all really proficient now with um, with Google Meets. And if we have to keep doing the Google Meets, we'll do them. But um, it is our goal to get back to where we can have you in person and seeing faces and, and asking questions. It looks like Tiffany has her hand up. Hi, good morning. Um, I was just wondering what, um, for community service, is there certain guidelines for that? Can they do anything for community service? Is there certain businesses? What falls under community service? So it's my understanding there. I think the guidelines are on the web page when you go into okay. um, there. So check that out. My understanding, as long as they're not getting paid for it, as it's not their job. So that right. they work. And again, too, I don't know if it can be a family member unless it's something like maybe they're helping the elderly out with uh, raking and that kind of that kind of things. They're usually pretty open-minded to what the student can do, but I do believe the guidelines are there. And if you if you have a question about it, reach out to us, we'll put you in touch with the person in charge and they can definitely answer that question. So we're, we're happy to help you with that. Okay, great, thank you. And I know one of the questions, and I know parents were very worried about this, and I understand because last year, we weren't able to offer electives because of the way we had to do um, our scheduling. But yes, our goal is, as Mr. Barber said, and all the councils have echoed the same thing, our goal is to get back to normal next year, to be able to offer all of the programs that we offered and everything is heading that way and we are prepared and what you're gonna get this year um, is the sheet that's gonna, that would have been the same sheet that students would have gotten last year. So you'll get the um, uh, course selection sheet and it will have the electives on there. Um, we're, we're moving forward as if next year is going to be back to the way it was the year before. And uh, so that's our goal. And, and I want you to feel comfortable about that. And again, I can't echo it enough as what Mr. Barber said. 
make sure that you fill it out. Even if your son or daughter has plans to go someplace else, we've seen it too often when things change over the summer and we don't want your student being backed up two or three days because they didn't have a schedule when they got here. So we wanna make sure every student that is a student at the Rainham or the Williams Middle School has a schedule and then they're ready to go if they do come here. If they don't, that's totally fine. We wish them the best and, and they should do, work very hard at their other schools, but we do wanna make sure they're prepared in case they do come back to Bridgewater Rainham. Do we have any more questions out there, folks? So I guess hearing none, uh, like I said, we've given you our contact information. You can reach out to any one of us. Uh, we'll end our presentation at this point. Give us a couple of days to get this um, into the tech department and have them upload it onto the website. If you have questions, you can refer back to it. And then after you've seen it, if you still have a question, feel free to reach back out to us. And I wanna thank you very much. And I wish you the best of luck with the class of 2025. It's gonna be a great, great, great four years. Take care, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.